Hey guys, what's going on? It's Joel Tavares here. You're watching Dual Shockers TV on DualShockers.com. I'm here with David Reed from CCP Games, and uh, we, we just checked out some uh, Dust 514, and I'm pretty blown away with the whole concept. <laughs> awesome. Um, it, all right, so last year at E3, I was there at the conference watching this whole demo, and the idea I was like, how are they going to pull this off? So, what do we have so far? Yeah, let's talk about some of the high-level stuff, okay. right? So, so first and foremost, Dust 514 is a free-to-play, AAA first-person shooter exclusive on PlayStation 3 shipping in 2012. And, and so, if you are somebody who's been playing on your PlayStation 3, you're, you're connected, you've been playing Battlefield or Call of Duty Online, those sorts of things, that multiplayer combat, you're going to be very familiar with the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay that you're going to get out of Dust 514, with a couple of interesting exceptions. Number one, completely free-to-play. We're not sharding off any part of the experience to be and, a paid and, not, only. and not pay to win. That's exactly right, because it is a skill-based genre, right? I mean, better shooters are going to beat people whether they spend money or not. Won't matter a bit, right? And But what you will be able to do is if you do choose to use the virtual currency and, and buy things in-game, you're going to be able to customize your gameplay more, unlock weapons of the same power but of a different style. You know, you'll certainly have plenty of cosmetic items if that's what you're looking to do, but the core moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is a very skill-based game and we are not violating that social contract, you will, if you will, with the first-person shooter audience, right? They will see merit as the way to move forward in this game. Right? The second thing that you'll find in Dust that you won't find in other shooters is a much deeper level of persistence. That as you go through the game, you earn skill points, whether you're fighting in battles and after battles, you get skill points as well as our in-game currency. Or if you're offline, because you will passively continue to get skill points as you, as you even if you're not logged in, uh, as you stay there. You'll use those skill points to customize your character even more, to be a particular kind of play style that you like. We're not forcing you to pick a particular class, right? I mean, you know, shooter guys are familiar. There's there's heavies, and there's snipers, and there's just your typical frontline grunts and things like that. But if you want to be a sniper who's wearing heavy armor but goes a little slower and can take a few more punches as a result, you can totally do that. If, on the other hand, you want to be a, um, a, a heavy that has a lighter set of armor and runs a little faster as a result, you can totally do that. And the skills that you choose and that you level up in-game are going to unlock more and more of these possibilities for you. So now, um, one of the big things, obviously, there's a there's a persistent war going on, and it's whole it, the way it's connected to Eve online. Absolutely. Now, how? So, <laughs> I was trying to get it broken down to me. Basically, my concern is I don't want my friends to be playing the MMO on the PC and uh, you know being dicks and just bombing me <laughs> repeatedly. Yeah. So, you know, how do you? How do you balance all of that out? It's a lot, yeah. to, it's a lot to figure out. Yeah, so let, let's talk about a couple things there, right? Number one, right, like you said, EVE Online is this PC MMO. It's been running for nine years now. It grows every single year. And, and the reason why is because it, it's not just about the fact that I'm flying in space and, and all the moment-to-moment -moment experience there in the graphics. It, it's a lot about the single shard universe that everyone playing EVE is literally playing with everybody else. There is no sort of notion of like, you know, you and I may meet in a bar and find out we play some MMO, but we're on different shards. And or, or we're different factions and we never get to play each other. Everybody in EVE is literally playing together all the time. And so now what we've done, right, is, is this, this single shard has been the engine for so many crazy stories about what you hear EVE players doing, the, the metagaming, the politics, the economy, the assassinations, the intrigue. Well, now we're allowing Dust players just picking up a controller, playing a first-person shooter on PS3, which they do every day, and being a part of that universe now. And so there are very clear mechanics that work where I, as a Dust player, will now accept a contract. And that contract can come from a computer-controlled corporation where, you know, I'll make some in-game currency and that'll be fun. Or there will be contracts offered by player-run corporations in EVE. And you can join in part of these galaxy domination plans that these corporations in EVE that have tens of thousands of people playing them who are saying to themselves, all right, I'm at war with Corporation X. Corporation X has this resource they're getting off of this planet and they've got a dust clan down there protecting it. We're going to go hire a better dust clan. We're going to look at the win-loss records, the leaderboards, who's a specialist at fighting this kind of battle and this kind of terrain. We're going to, exactly, we're going to cut off that supply line. We're taking those resources for ourselves. And that's how we're going to achieve a momentary victory in EVE Online. And one of the ways they'll do this is it won't just be, like you said, paying the contracts for the in-game currency. It'll also be what you saw with Orbital Bombardment, where literally, much like in, in real life, right? There would be a lot of problems with my friends if, they, if this, if this happens. <laughs> but here's how, here's how we think it'll work, right? Is that, yes, if you are an EVE player, right, and you're working with the Dust Clan, the Dust Clan will call in the Orbital Bombardment, as you've seen, you know, from what we delivered at FanFest in Iceland. And, and literally raining those missiles down on the Dust Battlefield having a huge impact on a PlayStation battle. 
Now, there will be some EVE people who will just take it upon themselves to drop missiles randomly and try to cause havoc on Dust players everywhere. Always fun. But you know what happens then, right? You will start to build a reputation for that. And when the Dust players see you coming, they will have their own cannons that they're able to fire from the surface. If you think about the video we showed at E3 2011 on stage with Sony, right, which was very much about a bunch of dust mercenaries getting a cannon, taking it, and firing up and blowing up an EVE spaceship. So it's a pretty big, dangerous universe out there, and if you build a reputation for being a prick... If you're to, that guy. If you're that guy, you're going to be known as that guy, and the dust guys are going to be looking for you. So it will come around to get you in karma for sure. Nice. So one of the things you did mention, I mean, you, 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 you highlighted, you know, the Call of Duties and the battlefields of the world. Um, what, one of the good things about Dust is that you got that pick up and play feel. Absolutely. So, you know, someone who's familiar can pick up and play it. But then, uh, one, of the things, one of the things that I noticed during my demo was just how much you can go into it. So yes. that's, that's where this becomes, you know, that's where I, I feel like a lot of the EVE DNA comes into the shooter aspect yeah. of it, right? So you got yeah. the skills and, and everything and all this progression and that's right. what everyone's about, right? Yeah, I mean if you are a if you are an Eve player, you will find a lot of things that you recognize in Dust in terms of the skills, in terms of the persistence and the leveling up and how that mechanic works. If you're not no problem, right? If you're a Battlefield player, Call of Duty player, what have you, you will be very familiar with the, you know, pick up a game plan, jump into a 10-minute death match, shoot a couple guys in the head and have a blast. And, of course, that's all free to play if you like, right? Now, what you'll find, right, as, as you know, when we think about the DNA of the team, like you say, right, there's, there's a couple of different skill sets there, right? So, certainly there's a lot of people who have been successful from the Iceland EVE Online team, very deep in the metagame and, and how to enable players to tell their stories and drive things forward. We also got a lot of first-person shooter experts, for example, we hired a number of, of senior people who have experience from DICE and working on the Battlefield license there directly, right? We've also got uh, an office in Newcastle, UK, 20-some uh, people there who have been building the, whole, the hardcore console tech for working on the PlayStation 3. So bringing a lot of great people across the industry to build this kind of once-in-a-lifetime game that is literally connecting the PC and the PlayStation 3 platforms in a way that's never been done before. It's not easy, and that's why it's required just this huge investment in great people across the world. Now, um, I'm not sure if this is something that's been asked before, but uh, the PlayStation 3 does support my uh, mouse and keyboard. Have there been any ideas that say, hey, maybe maybe Dust 514 is their taste and maybe they'll jump, they'll, ju <laughs> they'll want some Eve on the PlayStation 3. Is well, there any talk about that? I mean, You know, I, I, I think about it this way. Number one, we, we are solidly behind supporting mouse and keyboard on PS3, and you will be able to play Dust 514 on your PS3 with a mouse and a keyboard. We've also got move support. We're talking about Vita cohort apps. You know, there's a lot of stuff on PlayStation that only can be done with the PlayStation platform that we're fired up about making that happen in Dust. But I think to your core question about, like, you know, again, is there an idea of porting Eve online? To, to a console? Right now the answer is no. I mean, we, we think that the the moment-to-moment -moment experience of what you do in EVE Online is, is best suited for the play for the PC. What's best suited for the PlayStation is getting your using your first-person shooter mechanic to be a, a tunnel into that persistent EVE universe, right? Where you're part of that story, part of that drama, but you're not requiring people to learn the whole facet of EVE Online on the PC, right? And, and you know, when we're successful with Dust, you know, we just think about all these other possibilities, right? Of all the types of games that are out there, the types of gamers that are out there, different business models, different platforms. There's, there's no reason why you have to be a PC MMO player to be part of this EVE universe, right? We think there are a lot of different other people out there who are going to enjoy that just amazing single shard engine of drama and just making games more meaningful. Dust is the beginning of something really, really big, we think. Nice. Well, listen, Dust uh, 514, I just had my, my, my time uh, with the game. I enjoyed my time with it. Awesome. I'm, I'm really excited to, to see how this all pans out because, it's like you said, it's something that no one's really tried before, and uh, I, I just I can't wait to see the final yeah, product. So well, thank you so much. Very few companies are crazy enough to give it a run, but we are giving <laughs> it a shot. CCP is. <laughs> CCP is. So, guys, that's uh, Dust 514. You're watching DualShockers TV on DualShockers.com, and we're out.